I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, we're going to explore side chain gating. Now, interestingly, just before we go any further, side chaining is the process of taking one sound and rooting it into an effect to have that effect become more dynamic. Generally speaking, most people associate side chaining with side chain compression. But actually, that's just one way of applying a side chain. As we're going to see within this video, side chain gating means something slightly different. Let's just see how it might work in the context of this piece. Now, before we go any further and start thinking about how we're going to set up gates and root side chains into a gate, let's just hear the beginning of the piece that we're going to be working on. Okay, that's enough of that for now. You can hear that there's a reverb that's building up underneath the various elements of this piece. But I've actually set up a new track, which at the moment is unassigned, and it's playing this slightly um, industrial kind of synth lead noise, which actually sounds like this by itself. Okay, this kind of big sustained blast. And if I was to add this note as it stands right now the whole way through the piece, actually, I don't think that would be too artful. It would sound uh, really annoying quite quickly. So what we're actually going to do is to add this note and then break it up by gating the sound, triggering that gate from another sound within the piece so that this sound only plays when it's triggered by that other sound. So the first thing I'm going to do is to put in a little bit of this note and then we'll extend it for the duration. Let's just see how that might work. Okay, that's enough. It saves us having to actually record eight bars of it. Now, the note that I've created, first of all, it starts a little bit late. So what I'm going to do is to quantize it so it starts absolutely on the downbeat. I'm selecting a half note. What I'm then going to do is to drag this region out to this point here so that it lasts all the way through these eight bars. And then I can open up the region in question. Now, I can manually adjust the length of this note. I'm going to turn off the MIDI output light so that when I click on this note, it doesn't make a noise. I'm just going to do that now. And we can actually make a manual adjustment to make sure that that note lasts all the way through to those eight bars. So now, rather than actually having to play that note the whole way through, we've just created its length automatically. Next thing I'm going to do is to actually ignore that for a moment and think about the side chain trigger that I want to have uh, gate this sound. Now within the drum part, which is up here at the top, I've got a kick drum and a rim shot. The kick drum is playing a four to the floor pattern, and that's a really common sort of uh, pattern that's used in side chain compression. But in side chain gating, what I want to do is to actually take the other sound within this drum part, the rim shot, so that every time it plays, we're triggering this synth part. So the way that I'm going to do that is by duplicating this drum part, first of all. I can do that with the Duplicate Tracks button here at the top of the arrangement, and when I press that, instantly what happens is that we duplicate this drum part, so we've got a carbon copy of it down here. Then what I'm going to do is to copy the drum part down to this part as well, this new track, um, and Logic is asking if I want to copy the automation data, which I don't need to do this time. What I'm then going to do is to open this part up and see those two instruments that I was talking about. The rim shot here is on C sharp one, and the bottom note down here is the kick drum. I'm going to select all of the kick drums and throw them away because I don't need those for this side chain part that I'm working on here. Let's close down the editor. We've stripped out the notes we don't need. And what I'm also going to do is to take off the filter which is on this track. Because we duplicated this track, it's taken the filter data from the main drum part down to this new instrument as well. And I don't need that on this part. But what I am going to do is to change the name of this track to Sidechain Trigger. And by holding down Shift and Alt and N, I can rename this track as well so I can instantly see that this is my Sidechain Trigger part. So if I solo it, we should hear that this is just a rim shot by itself. Okay, so that's working nicely. Now, the only thing is, I don't actually want to hear this part. I want to use the notes and the signal that's within this individual side train trigger region, but I don't want to hear them playing. Remember, I've already got the rim shot playing as part of the domain drum part. So what I'm going to do is to reroute the output here. Automatically, by default, every part within my mix is being routed to the stereo output, which is why I can hear it. And what I'm going to do is to change that. By turning it to no output, what I've done here is to make sure that whilst the signal is still being routed internally, we're not hearing it within the arrangement anymore. So when I press solo, now the part will still play in Logic, but we're just not hearing it through the speakers. 
So I've now got a sidechain trigger that I can assign. Now what I want to do is to work out where to assign it. And to make life straightforward, let's move up the part for this new synth that we've created so that it's sitting right next to the sidechain trigger so we can see those two tracks side by side. What I'm going to do on this synth part is to find the gate effect that I want to use. So I'm going to click in the first insert slot on this sound and I'm going to come down to dynamics which is where the noise gate uh, resides. So here it is, I can set this up and here's what the no noise gate looks like. We can rescale this window as well so we can see a little bit more clearly and here is Logic's gate. Now what noise gates do traditionally is that they basically force open. They're a bit like compressors in that they have a threshold point. And in order for a sound to be heard through a gate, it has to exceed that threshold point. If the sound is loud enough, the gate opens and we hear the sound. And if it's not loud enough, the gate doesn't open and we don't hear the sound. Gates were really useful back in the days when people were working and mixing with tape. Tape has some sound. Each individual track will produce some hiss. And cumulatively, all of that hiss together, if you're listening back to a mix, can become a bit overwhelming. If you put a gate on each individual track, there has to be signal present on that track to open the gate so that we actually hear it. So we have this relationship between what we call signal and noise ratio. So gates were incredibly useful and they remain really useful in a slightly different context now. So what we're going to do here is we're going to first of all root in our sidechain source. By coming over here we can select the sidechain input signal that we want to use and because I renamed the track it's very easy to find our sidechain chain um, trigger which is here. So by doing that rather than the gate listening only for the input signal it's looking outside of itself to take instructions if you like from the sidechain trigger that um, is being rooted in as its source. So let's solo these two sounds and see what settings we've got. The signal, the sidechain trigger needs to exceed 50, minus 50 decibels to open the uh, gate in the first place but I think the rim shot is loud enough to do that and then we'll see what control we have to allow us to sort of finesse the way that this gate's going to work. Okay, so you can see very easily every time the gate is closed in the gaps between those notes, the closed light is on and then it opens every time it receives the sidechain input signal. So that's fine. Just to show you what I mean about threshold, if we push the threshold higher, much louder, louder in fact, or requiring more volume than the rim shot is actually producing, the gate won't open at all. So here, for example, at minus 5 dB, the rim shot isn't loud enough. If we drop it away, we'll hear it opening more um, easily or, or straight away. So that's working nicely. What we've then got control is a sort of uh, envelope style control over the way that the gate actually behaves. I've got an attack time, which basically means that when the gate opens, how quickly does it open? Do we get an immediate response or can we slow that down? So that's what the attack time will control. We've then got a hold level and even more crucially, we've got a release time. Now that basically means how quickly is the gate going to close once the signal that's triggering it stops triggering it. So once the gate is no longer receiving a sidechain input signal which is forcing it to open, how quickly does it close again? And actually musically this is a very interesting parameter. Let's see what it does. Okay, so you can see that with a longer release time, the gate takes a long time to close, and as a result, we get a much more sustained sound. Let's see how that might work in the context of the piece. Okay, that's working quite nicely. What if we want to make those changes part of the track rather than actually having to play them back every single time? Well, it would be good to record them as a line of automation data. And the way that I can do that is to come over on the left-hand side down into this track header and select latch mode. And that's going to allow me to record this parameter. And if we open up Logic's automation mode, we'll actually see that parameter being written in in real time as I repeat exactly what I did before. I'm just gonna press play and record some release time information.
So now what we've got is an automation line which responds to this individual release time within this uh, setting. Now at the moment the sound still sounds quite dry and that's because at the moment there is no there are no effects on it. So if we wanted to bed it in and make it more part of the mix, absolutely no problem. What we can do is simply just add a bit of the tape delay for instance and the reverb that's already present on the auxiliaries within this individual project here and we can boost those and maybe we can tuck the volume in a little bit to make it more part of this piece as well. Let's just hear how that sounds. Now it's worth really bearing in mind that whilst we've performed this particular action on this synth part that we've added, remember it's a sustained sound which we've sort of chopped up, you can do this with any piece of audio. Uh, or in fact, an audio is the crucial word here. I could bring in an Apple loop and set up a, um, a noise gate exactly as we have here. So if you don't have envelope style control on the sound that you're working on, gates and sidechain triggers for those gates is a particularly effective way to work. So I could take a long sustained vocal note or a string phrase or just any any bit of audio that I find on a sample pack, drag it in, set up a noise gate like this and trigger it from another sound within my mix. So within this video what we've done is to look at side chaining on gates. Remember side chaining as a concept is something that can be applied to a number of effects, not just compression. What we've done here is to set up a gate, route through a side chain input signal and we've added a lane of automation for the release time of this gate, which means that we've got this interesting emerging texture which grows and ebbs and flows with the track more broadly. And crucially what we've done is also to address the point that you can simply do this with any bit of audio signal you like, whether it's a synthesizer as we have here or with any audio loop.